session number 30 of the series on military law relates to armed forces tribunal uh, in uh, next few lectures we would see as to what is the jurisdiction powers and role of uh, aft it would be interesting to see the background uh, that led to setting up of the armed forces tribunal and that was essentially the supreme court decision and comments uh, in the matter relating to the colonel prithi pal singh bedi and that matter related to the decision reported in 1982 uh, in at that situation there were a large number of cases that pertain to service matters or court partial trial that were pending uh, before uh, the various judicating authorities. And uh, in light of that, in its decision in PPS Bedi's matter, the Supreme Court held that absence of even one appeal with power to review evidence, legal formulations, conclusion, and adequacy or otherwise of punishment in the laws relating to armed forces was a distressing and glaring lacuna. It urged the government to take steps to provide for at least one judicial review in service matters. Now, what had happened was that after a court martial ended, uh, the person who was aggrieved with the decision of the court martial could put up a petition, but the petition had to be in writing. There was no opportunity of a personal hearing and effective review and relook at the decision and uh, even in matters of uh, service uh, there was only an opportunity of a statutory complaint to the central government or the chief of army staff now this was seen as inadequate with regard to opportunities to defend and exercise their effective rights by the supreme court Shortly thereafter, the Estimates Committee of the Parliament uh, in their 19th report that was presented to Lok Sabha, it also desired, it, it so indicated in its report that the government should constitute an independent statutory board or tribunal for service person. Now the emphasis there was on independent application of mind after a court martial had given its verdict or the central government or the service headquarters had examined a matter because they were considered to be only to be merely in-house uh, decisions and not uh, an independent application of mind and therefore question of constituting an independent adjudicatory forum and uh, this could have been only a tribunal for the defense personnel, it was engaging the attention of the central government for a long time and there were depo uh, reports, demands in the media, on the floor of the legislature and from the serving and ex-service personnel. Uh, that culminated in the enactment of Armed Forces Tribunal Act in 2007. It came as Act Number 55 of 2000. Seven, and this is applicable, the jurisdiction of AFT is applicable to all persons who are under the Army, Navy or Air Force Act and also extends to retired persons, including dependents, heirs and successors insofar as the matter relates to service uh, issues of a person who was once subject to military law. Certain definitions that would help in uh, further examination of the AFT Act. It has two types of members, administrative member and judicial member. Administrative member means a member of the tribunal who is not a judicial member. So the definition has been kept in that fashion. And whereas judicial member means a member of the tribunal appointed as a judicial member. And this also extends to the chairman. 
The other important matter is service matters. What all is included in service matters? And these are service conditions. These include all types of remuneration or allowances, uh, benefits like uh, terminal benefits, pensionary benefits, uh, and in this manner, gratuity, etc. Uh, secondly, about the tenure of service, because such short service commission officers or certain senior officers. Sales Subhida Majors, they have a fixed tenure, including grant of commission, appointment, enrollment, which is the induction process, uh, then uh, persons who remain on probation till their confirmation, seniority, matters of training, promotion, advancement in career, reversion to a previous rank, post or grade, premature retirement, superannuation, termination of service and penal deductions. All of these matters are included in the definition of service matters, which can be taken up to the AFT. This also includes summary disposals and trials, provided the punishment which has been meted out is dismissal or above. And therefore, just for example, where a punishment awarded is say severe reprimand or reprimand or stoppages, that would not come within the purview of the AFT and any other matter whatsoever at the discretion of the AFT. What is not included in uh, service matter is also relevant. Firstly, the presidential pleasure doctrine, uh, which is invoked by way of uh, section 18 provisions of the Army Act and uh, the other uh, analogous provisions of the Navy and Air Force Act. Now, where action has been taken, according to the pleasure of the president, that matter cannot be taken to the AFT. And the other matter is transfers and posting. And transfers and posting could be by way of an individual being moved from unit A to B, or the entire unit or part of a unit being moved from one geographical location to another. That matter cannot be taken will not be included in service matters and obviously this is because of its implication and connection to the conditions of service. Next matter that is outside the purview of AFT is the leave of any kind or whether it is scheduled leave, annual leave, medical leave or maternity leave. Well, these uh, would be beyond the jurisdiction of AFT and lastly the summary court martial except when the punishment awarded by somebody court martial is dismissal or imprisonment for more than three months. Less than three months or where the punishment is below dismissal, well, that cannot be taken to the AFT. And again, perhaps the reason for this is to give adequate powers to enforce discipline uh, to the commanding officers. In so far as composition of tribunal, how would the tribunal uh, be um, composed? It shall, it consists of a chairperson and uh, judicial and administrative members as the central government may deem fit. And each bench uh, has to have one judicial member and one administrative member. Now, it is also specified in the act that uh, the benches of the tribunal shall sit at Delhi. Delhi is called the principal bench and at such other places that central government may by notification specify. For example, presently in uh, uh, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, Lucknow, uh, Jaipur, Jabalpur, Jammu, uh, such places have the benches of the AFT. What are the qualifications and expectations with regard to the eligibility for appointment of chairperson and other members? Chairperson has to be a retired judge, either of the Supreme Court or a retired Chief Justice of a High Court. They alone are competent for consideration uh, in so far as qualified to be a chairperson. Judicial member has to be one who is or has been a judge of the High Court. Uh, this is there in section 6 of the AFT and uh, insofar as administrative members are concerned, uh, one has to be uh, holding 
or one who has held the rank of major general or equivalent for a period not less than three years. But if an officer of the judge advocate general's department is uh, selected, then eligibility criteria instead of three years is one year. It is also laid down when a serving person is appointed as an administrative member, he shall have retired from service before assuming such appointment and therefore one cannot be in service uh, when he is appointed as an administrative member. The president alone appoints the chairman and other members and for this he is required to hold proper consultation with the Chief Justice of India and uh, out of the members one or more can be appointed uh, to be the vice chairman or vice chairperson of the AFT. How long uh, would uh, the chairperson or members serve? Uh, this is covered under section 8 of the act which says that chairperson or member shall hold uh, office for a term of four years uh, subject to the maximum ceiling, a maximum age being 70 years uh, for those who have been a judge of the Supreme Court and uh, for the Chief Justice uh, it is 65 years uh, which is for the members as well and it is also laid down the chairperson shall be ineligible for further employment under the government uh, that is a prohibition for holding uh, office after ceasing to be a part of the AFT and a member other than chairperson uh, shall be eligible for appointment a member of any other tribunal but not for any other employment. Therefore, a member who was not a chairperson can go to serve in other tribunals, say for example, company appellate tribunal or central administrative tribunal, but he cannot look or he cannot accept any other employment and chairperson or member shall not appear, act or plead before the tribunal that is in so far as their status, dignity uh, and position is uh, considered. Uh, thus, uh, it can be said in conclusion that the AFT has been so designed that it becomes capable of providing a meaningful remedy, relief to the defense personnel and also ex-servicemen or families in matters relating to service or when they are agreed with the award or decision of a court martial. Thank you.